Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, maybe you can kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible new series, The Serpent Queen. Um, it's a period drama, but it's got quite a unique tone to it. It's not, not maybe what people might expect. So, so, so what can, what can, why should people watch it, do you think? Um, I think people should watch it because it's historical, but yet modern. I mean, it's quite poppy in its feel. Um, it's got amazing performances and uh, an amazing group of actors. Um, and yeah, I think what I like about it most is it's like it's a historical piece, but yet the way Justin has decided to kind of execute it um, is like really kind of modernizing it in a way. And I'm really interested in seeing what kind of audience it draws in um, because. Um, I think it's a nice fusion of your traditional kind of uh, audience that loves period pieces. But yet, yeah, I feel like that, that kind of modern approach, which I think is so prevalent in the trailer, um, uh, I think it might entice a kind of new and younger audience into it. So I think it's quite smart in a way, really. Mm. And can you give us um, a very brief intro kind of to the, to the context and particularly a bit about your character? Um, okay, uh, so my character, I play Charles de Guise, who is a cardinal. Um, he is part of King Henry's Privy Council. Um, he was given a cardinalship at a young age, which I think at the time he was quite excited by. But certainly as time goes on, and definitely in the way I'm sort of playing a character, I feel there's a lot of resentment there that he this kind of uh, responsibility was forced upon him. Um, and so I was really trying to bring elements of like, what would that, what would that do if you, you know, got this responsibility of faith and you're, you're trying to grow up with this thing and there's, you know, feelings of guilt and uh, you're not really being able to grow up as, as a child um, or a teenager and so I really tried to bring elements of that to it. It's like, what would that do to you? And how would that make you feel? And how would that change your relationships growing up? So, um, so from that point of view, it was really exciting to be able to kind of uh, bring a lot of subtext to it, which I hope reads <laughs> on, on, on the final cut. And, you know, how much were you aware of, you know, about the period in general, but particularly, um, you know, the storylines that the, the series deals with? Because I felt like I was quite ignorant of it all. And definitely, I guess, when you're coming onto a set, do you have to do your own research or was it all there in the script for you? Um, I, I was, like you, completely ignorant. I mean, I'd heard of the Medici, fam the, the Medici family uh, and Catherine specifically, but didn't know too much about it. Um, History was never really my thing, but um, uh, but, but uh, so I, I had to I had to do a lot of research, um, and uh, so got the book audio book um, that the, the 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 project is based on. Listened to that, tried to delve into that kind of period as much as I I could, and then and of course when you're building your character, there's only so much you could take of someone that's not really alive that you can't meet and talk to. So just had to kind of then make my own sort of decisions on how I think he might feel or react to, to certain situations. Um, but yeah, so it was that, that whole thing was really interesting to me. I mean, it's fascinating going, stepping back into time. And, and, and of course we were shooting in real castles and the real places where it's all talked about in the book. So that was another kind of fascinating element to it and um, really helpful in trying to get the feel of what you're doing. Mm. I was going to ask about that next. You know, like, yeah, what was it like on the shoot? Because I guess, yeah, you've done your research for actually being there in the costumes and it really feels so real, so tangible, the, the way it's been shot, nothing feels like false or anything. Um, so did you have that feeling as well when you were shooting the series? Yeah, I did. I did. Because like we were, you know, there was studio stuff we did, but then we had these opportunities to be in the real castles. And, and, and that I think was thanks to, in some ways, to that kind of, that period of COVID as well, where we had the availability to get into these places. Um, so there was some positivity of that. And, um, but for me getting into costume and being able to look, for me to do anything period is amazing because I've never had those opportunities in my career. Um, uh, the first time I did it was on a film Colette. And, um, and I just remember that experience as just being really amazing. It was the first time I was given the opportunity as an actor of colour to be able to 
dress up in these clothes because the director kind of made a decision that it didn't actually matter what color the actor is. It's just more about the execution of performance, which is amazing. And so, and, and, and again, grateful to Justin for, for casting it in this way where I had the ability to like put on these costumes and just, you know, feel childlike again. It was amazing, like getting dressed in all that. And yeah, I don't get those opportunities. So for me, that was another group, a big pull of doing something like this. And it does feel like that that needle ha has been moved, you know, in the past few years, particularly I'm thinking of Bridgerton, have you seen what's Persuasion? I mean, there's been lots of period dramas now where they're kind of doing more open casting. Yeah. But do you think there's still a bit of a barrier there? And, and it does feel very contemporary in this series. And, and it's for that reason and also kind of the tone of it, um, which definitely feels more modern than some other period dramas. Mm -hmm. Um, I no, I think that I think the needle is changing and, and has changed considerably. Like we're here talking about, uh, you know, me being in a show like this, and I've been acting for so many years. Um, so there's definitely changed without a doubt. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, of course it could always be improved and be better. Um, but I think we, we like. I think it's an amazing time right now. I think it's an incredible time, and I think I think people are finally realizing that actually what audiences want is just really good content. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, you know it, it, they want really good content, and it doesn't really matter who's in it as long as people are delivering great performances. I don't think anyone really cares, and I think the shows that are really excelling. Um, and in Squid Games, for example, I mean, so was it a number one show around the world and, and most people watched it and, in, and it, it was in Korean, you know, so it, it makes people are just want good content and they really, you know, the, the, those other things uh, fall by the wayside and mm. people just want good stories. And we have to talk about your your fellow cast. I mean, it's an incredible ensemble cast, in fact. There's so many great people. But she came right at the centre, Samantha Morton. I've been such a fan of hers from way back in the day. And then, you know, long, Young Liv taking on the, um, the younger version. So, you know, what was it like working with all these incredible people and particularly these amazing um, female actors, you know, taking on these female characters? Yeah, amazing. Sam's just fantastic. And like, you know, like yourself, like she's always been one of those actors that have, uh, wanted to work with. I mean, we knew each other a, a little bit before doing this, um, but I've always wanted to work with her and um, it didn't disappoint. It's amazing doing scenes with her. Um, she's just incredible. I think she's one of the finest actors we've got in this country. And, um, and Liv, I have to say, like watching um, the opening episodes of her, I think she is such a special talent. She's amazing in this. Um, she has such gravitas and such a presence and um, really kind of sets the tone of the show um, so beautifully. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm really taken by her performance in this. I think she's brilliant. Mm. And, and what about your kind of perspective from where you are? I mean, you've done so many amazing roles. And then, of course, the, the blinding success of, of Boiling Point mm. and, and now on to this. So, you know, how do you reflect on, on these last few years and what have you got your sights on next? Um, I, I, I reflect on it with, with massive gratitude and, and grateful for the opportunities that I'm being given. I feel like, um, I feel like almost as the industry is changing, um, it, it almost feels like my career, like a new start to my career in a way, like, because of the, like the, the opportunities are greater now, again, being an actor of colour, there's better opportunities. So now I feel like I'm able to express myself as an artist so much more in the, in, in the choices that I can make. Um, and that's been really refreshing. And um, yeah, just, it's hard to really articulate, but um, uh, it's, I don't think you could, really judge an artist until until they're at the point where they're able to start making choices. And I feel like um, now I'm able to do that because the industry has changed so much for the better um, that I really feel free and I feel like um, 
I can express myself so much more in, in, in what I want to do. So I'm just excited. I'm excited for what the future holds. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. And yeah, I was waffling a bit there, but you know what I mean. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, well, it's been so great to chat to you. Is that, who have you got on your T-shirt? Is that, is that an actress? Lana Del Rey. Oh, amazing. I love it. <laughs> and I can't wait for everyone else to see The Serpent Queen. Thanks so much for sharing oh, that with us. Lovely to chat to you. Thank you. Bye.